developmental dysplasia of the hip, referred to as DDH, is a gradually progressive disorder due to the malformation of anatomical structures around the hip. For the most part, the pathology exists in the acetabulum instead of the femoral head. In a normal hip, the acetabulum has a sharp margin, allowing it to form a deep socket for the femoral head. In DDH, the posterior superior rim of the acetabulum loses this acute angle and becomes flattened and thickened. This results in a shallow acetabulum, allowing the femoral head to slide in and out freely, usually into a proximal and lateral displacement. The labrum surrounds the acetabulum to deepen the ball and socket joint. As this head rides in and out of the socket, friction occurs as it rubs against the articular cartilage of the acetabulum, usually on the posterior superior acetabular wall. This results in a thickening of the acetabular cartilage and labrum, which are referred to as the neolimbus and limbus respectively. The sliding of the femoral head over the neolimbus produces the clunk that is palpable on physical examination. DDH refers to a spectrum of disease presentations as a result of this deformity. The term dysplasia refers to a deficient development of the acetabulum, which is confirmed with radiographic findings of an increased obliquity and the loss of the concavity of the acetabulum. Subluxation refers to a femoral head that is not in full contact with the acetabulum, whilst the dislocation specifies that the femoral head is not in contact with the acetabulum. Some hips that are unstable at birth spontaneously reduce and become normal, with a remodeling of the acetabulum back into an ideal anatomical arrangement. But in hips that remain dislocated, secondary barriers can develop which impede the reduction of the joint in the future. The continued enlargement of the limbus and neolimbus can hinder the reduction of the femoral head. The limbus may also invert or evert further obstructing the reduction of the femoral head. The depth of the acetabulum is reduced with other secondary changes as well. This can be due to a thickening of the fatty tissue known as the pulvina, or the thickening and elongation of the ligamentum teres, as well as the upwards migration of the transverse acetabular ligament, where the ligamentum teres originates from. These pathologies take up valuable space within the acetabulum. The joint capsule can also assume a more hourglass-like shape creating a bottleneck against the femoral head. As the femoral head remains in a dislocated position for long durations, the soft tissue surrounding the joint can also experience changes. As the iliopsoas tendon wraps around the joint capsule to insert at the lesser trochanter, it can constrict on the neck of the capsule, exacerbating the hourglass shape. Other pelvifemoral muscles inserting into the femur can also undergo a contracture, preventing the reduction of the femoral head. These secondary barriers hinder the ability for first-line treatment options, such as a closed reduction, to be performed successfully, and may indicate for the need for an open reduction accompanied by other surgical corrections.